Hey folks, this is John out here in Montgomery. I uh, just wanted to uh, make a quick video. Uh, I've had a chance to actually put this mulcher into action and I'd like to just go over uh, some of the things I've learned. And at the end of this video, I got another short video of some work I just did down in the, uh, in the woods back there. I'll show you the results of the mulcher uh, as the work is done. I haven't had a chance to get a live shot of it in action. So uh, let me go over a few things that I'd like to, I think are, are important. If you're thinking about buying one or you've just bought one, I just want to kind of point out a few things uh, on this. So let me, uh, let me get the camera around here to the front of the lens and let's talk about that. All right, so the first thing, um, oh, by the way, if you hear dogs fighting in the background, they're just goofing off, just don't, just ignore them. So uh, you can obviously tell here that uh, this is not uh, from, like it was on the first video. It is definitely not brand new anymore. Uh, it's been used. Uh, this only has about, oh, probably 30, maybe 40 hours, maybe 30. I'm gonna sit with 30. It's only about 30 hours on this. And one of the things that um, is probably the biggest concern for me regarding this mulcher is the uh, is the teeth. You see, I've looked high and low and I cannot find a supplier for replacement teeth. So that means taking care of these teeth, at least right now until we find a source for replacement teeth, is pretty darn important. And you can tell here in that, let me kind of get down here a little closer. I don't know if that's focused or not, but you can see the wear on the teeth, not too bad but you can see little, little chips already. And the soil here is pretty sandy. There's hardly any rocks here. And I know, I know sand can sometimes be, be worse on these uh, teeth than anything else. But there are a few here that really took a beating. Let's see if we can find those. Okay, see this one here is actually missing this whole piece, which means this piece right here is gonna wear down pretty quickly. This one the same way. Could be maybe I hit something on this side Okay, you see there's a, there's a chip in there already. Again, there's only about 30 hours. Now look, th some of this could just be my sloppy uh, process of uh, how I'm going after the material. And maybe I just need to practice a little more and be a little more, a little more careful. Okay, so that one's missing piece. All right, there's a couple more that are chipped around here. But I think you get the idea um, that if we can't get replacement teeth, we're gonna to have to be pretty careful. The other thing, and this again, probably goes back to, to my uh, my aggressiveness, is every once in a while you'll have a tooth that kind of gets off like that or gets twisted like that. Um, you know, my, my technique is to, as soon as I'm done with the job, I come over here, I wash it off, and I pull those teeth off, uh, get all the dirt and stuff out from behind and, um, and replace them, or I should not say replace them, but take them off, clean it up, and make sure I've got them tightened back down again. So overall, I suppose, uh, this is after, oh, maybe uh, maybe an acre and an acre and a half of pretty dense brush. You'll see that in the video that follows here. But um, with that in mind, uh, these teeth, through my research, are supposed to be, you know, three to 400 hours worth of use. Uh, I've got maybe 30, and they're looking pretty worn and torn. So. Again, could be me, uh, but it, I'm a little concerned that as uh, soon as I lose one, uh, if I do, uh, where I'm going to get one, I have no idea. So that's something you want to think about. If you're considering buying one of these, going out on the auction sites, because that's where they all are, um, you probably ought to think about whether or not you're going to be able to get replacement teeth. All right. The other thing that um, some of the documentation, or I should say the specs that are out there on some of the sites, is very misleading. I mean, really misleading. Uh, in fact, uh, on my website, I actually show one of the links where they talk about this configuration. It is, I believe, a, an, an eBay site. And of course, you can't really depend on eBay. And it talks about this being standard flow. I will tell you, uh, this mulcher is definitely not standard flow. This is a high flow mulcher. Uh, all the specifications, including the specs direct from the manufacturer of the hydraulic motor, which is right under that hood there that I've taken apart. And if you saw my first video, you know I have the specs from the manufacturer. Uh, it is uh, 24 to 39 gallons per minute. Uh, and I ran it on standard flow and the maximum revolutions you'll get out of this drum at standard flow with the uh, engine sitting near max is about 950, 980 RPMs, nowhere near what you should be running. You gotta be up there around 2000. Uh, in fact, the specs say uh, 
1900 to 2000, I believe is what the specs say. So there's no way this is a standard flow. Uh, and I've looked at the hydraulics, there's no adjustment on it. There's no way I could get those RPMs out of there. So it is definitely a high flow uh, device. Uh, the other thing is it is about 2,300 pounds. Uh, and while this ta my Takauchi here is 111 horsepower roughly, uh, there are you know there are times when when you're running the mulcher, uh, which is running off your hydraulics, your track is moving, and you're trying to lift and turn, uh, you can feel the strain. Um, it's not extremely responsive, but I could be just too picky. So keep in mind, whatever the specs say, I don't believe them. It is high flow. Uh, you got the teeth you're going to be concerned about. You need, to know, you need to have high flow on your um, skid steer. And the other thing is make sure your windshield is, uh, is the proper uh, Lexan or probably polycarbonate uh, windshield and it's thick enough uh, that it's rated for uh, forestry type work. And that's, uh, that's probably the number one or number two, number three things. There we go. The teeth, the flow, and the, um, the windshield. And oh, I guess there were four. That is the horsepower uh, of the uh, skid steer. All right, just wanted to point those things out because if you're looking, you need to make sure you're not dependent on those specs. Uh, oh, I might point out one more thing. Uh, if you check out uh, my site, uh, topcatmulchers.com, there are some links on there that lead to some sites where these things used to be for sale before they went out to all the um, uh, auctions. And I will tell you, keep an eye on the auctions. I'm watching, I've seen these things go for uh, as little as six or seven. I've seen them go for 20. Uh, one went for 20 here in Houston at a Ritchie Brothers. Um, hey, if you really need it, I guess you gotta really need it. But uh, I'm thinking probably somewhere around 12, 13 is probably a decent price for these. Uh, Cause it is after all getting the job done. Despite my concern about the teeth, it is getting the job done. So I'm going to leave it at that, and following this will be the video uh, showing the area that I just mulched and kind of give you an idea what this thing's capable of doing. I kind of wanted to show you a little bit what was going on here, uh, kind of give you an idea what, uh, what my uh, top cap mulcher, what the top cap mulcher is capable of doing. Uh, it, it does have some limitations. I'm going to get more into that uh, in additional videos. But here's sort of the challenge I have from this piece of land. This is the uh, this is a typical uh, overgrown underbrush uh, type environment here in this part of Texas. You just can't even walk through here. So uh, this is why underbrush clearing uh, has become such a uh, such a fad here in this part because uh, to clear that manually, um, you either going to come in there with a bulldozer and just tear things up and create uh, erosion issues, uh, or you're going to go in there manually doing all this and that is a job so the mulcher much like the top cat here okay hanging around my takauchi uh, basically this whole area that uh, i've already cleaned sorry about that fast action there but this whole area here you can see some of the area here i've not gotten to it's a pretty small patch i've got a couple acres over on the other side uh, i will show you in another video but this is the beauty of this thing is you take this kind of uh, mess uh, and you're able to fairly easily uh, that's a little chunky you got a few spots in here that need to be cleaned up I, you'll notice uh, i don't get real close to the trees um, and most of the trees you'll see right here there'll be all sorts of stuff around the trees i don't like to get close because i don't want to damage these really nice oak trees so i i'm willing to stay back and come in and do some manual work uh, versus trying to get the uh, mulcher to do everything and end up damaging the tree and, and shortening its life. I'll just show you the space here. One of the goals here is along the fence line here, the neighbor's property, you see that area was well maintained. You can see it's, uh, they came in and mulched that several years ago. Obviously, them and me. See, what a mess, huh? So, Right here, you can see I'm clearing out this uh, easement uh, right at the very end of that. If you could see way there to where the sun's shining through the end of that tunnel, if you will. That's where the power lines come in. And I'm clearing this out here specifically so we can trench and put the uh, power underground like we did on the other half of the property. So just wanted to show you that. Um, I'll be combining this into another video. But uh, 
right now I got to get to work because I got to continue this trail back through that mess right there. Talk to you later.